I'll turn it over to Mr. Bardacki. Thank you. Um, great summary of where we're at. Um, uh, I think this is my third time in the last six months um, uh, as your, um, with before you um, as the previous economic uh, trends guy talked about. Um, you know, this is an interesting market that moves, uh, can move up and down as we get closer and closer to particular points in time. The, the information gets better and more refined and so I'm really pleased to be able to uh, come before you now um, with some sort of more precise um, estimates about where we will be with um, uh, at rates um, come come October, which I think is really what um, you know folks. Some folks are are very um, were the, based on what I was here last time, really looking at um, for where where we would be in in October when this default change uh, occurs for clean or potentially for a hundred percent green. So um, just with that. Um, I, I know you all know this, but for the members of the public tuning in, um, Clean Power Alliance, we're a non-for-profit uh, energy provider, electricity provider, uh, the default provider here in, in Camarillo. Um, we offer clean uh, power at competitive rates. We purchase the energy, put it on the lines, Edison uh, delivers the energy, and people have two line items on their bills. Uh, it's still the same Edison bill, but one line item goes to uh, Edison for the lines and wires. The other line item goes to us for um, the actual electrons. Um, those two line items actually existed before we were uh, in service here in Camarillo, but um, they were bundled. And when we talk about a bundled customer, uh, uh, that's someone who's with Edison for both uh, energy and uh, infrastructure. Um, Clean Power Alliance, we're a 32 member agency joint powers authority um, uh, across Los Angeles and Ventura counties. Here in Ventura County, we serve all, um, all the unincorporated Ventura and all cities in Ventura County except for Port Wenimi, Santa Paula, and Fillmore. So 90 plus percent of all electricity delivered in, in Ventura uh, is supply that, that we supply. About a million customers were the largest uh, uh, CCA in the state. Um, we've now become the fifth largest electricity provider in the state of California. Uh, we'll probably do you know somewhere around $850 million in revenue this year. Um, one thing that has happened based on decisions made by city councils across our service territory is um, we now have more customers on 100% renewable energy plans than any other utility in the country. So we're supplying more renewable energy, uh, again, more than any utility in the country, but also um, certainly here in, in California. Um, and in addition to the choice of rates, uh, we do offer uh, local community programs above and beyond those offered by SCE. Um, our customers are still eligible for those um, SCE programs as well. Um, this, uh, this again, um, is just a little bit more background, but I do like to plug it for um, uh, our customers here. Um, we do, for our low-income customers, um, have a power share program. Uh, which where we offer a 20% discount to low-income customers to get the 100% renewable energy rate. Uh, that's a, a sort of, there are some specific guidelines about how you qualify for that one, um, but uh, it, it's out there. Um, power response, we're paying now um, customers 200, up to $200 a, a year to reduce their energy usage um, in peak times, that is between 4 and 9 p.m., uh, if they'll let us um, uh, essentially control their thermostat um, for a couple of, um, uh, about up to 12 times a year during high, uh, times of high demand. Um, we have incentives for publicly available EVG, EV charging stations. Um, great to see the city installing those. Um, our almost $10 million investment in Ventura County was the single largest investment in that EV infrastructure um, to date. Um, we're doing uh, quite a bit of scholarship and workforce development work, um, both in conjunction with the community colleges, 
including uh, Moore Park and Ventura, uh, as well as with uh, the International Brotherhood of Electrical Workers to make sure that uh, the, the jobs in renewable energy um, stay good, well-paying, uh, uh, family-sustaining wages. Um, and then finally, for important for this discussion, um, in the cities that have decided to go to 100% green default, um, all low-income customers um, in, uh, in those areas get the 100% renewable energy product at the clean rate. So um, the, the, the clean rate is the rate in the middle. That's the rate that you all voted to move up to from lean power. Um, uh, if you go to green power, your low-income customers would not see a rate increase um, above and beyond the about a dollar that they would experience uh, in, in the clean power rate. Um, so just, uh, you, you got the history. Um, uh, each council chooses a default rate. We allow councils to change that. Um, uh, there's the history. I'll just note that most customers, uh, and we've seen this uh, across the board, whether it was an original decision or a decision that moved, tend to stick with the default rate that the customers, uh, that the city councils um, choose. People do opt out when, when a, a default change happens. People do opt down. Um, that does happen. Uh, in our most recent three cities that changed uh, their defaults this past year, um, it ranged between uh, two and three percent of customers either opted out or opted down. Um, uh, here's where we stand in terms of our 32 member agencies and where they are uh, located in terms of this default rate. Um, We've now got 15 communities, or almost half, uh, already at the 100% green rate. We started out with 10. Um, in our first year, two more moved um, from clean to 100% green. Uh, and then this past year, uh, three more moved, two from lean and one from clean, uh, up to 100%. That's how we got to 15. Uh, in this past year, um, beginning in December and then now moving into uh, January and February, we've had five more jurisdictions um, move to the 100% green level uh, beginning in October of 2022. So that is um, uh, the city of Hawthorne, Beverly Hills, Claremont, Redondo Beach, and then the big one, which is Los Angeles County, which um, comprises about 30% of our customer base. So when all um, is said and done uh, with just these five, we'll have um, in the neighborhood of two thirds to three quarters of our customers uh, will be on the 100% green rate if history repeats itself in the fact that most people will um, not make a, a change after the default. Um, and again, I'll note uh, the low-income customer base. Um, I remember uh, last time I was here, Council Member Kildy, you you asked why are they doing this, um, you know? And and I'll, I'll, I'll it was a great question, and I've been asked it more, and I'm going to sort of repeat the answer of what I see because I've been doing this now a few, uh, several times, uh, presenting to a number of councils. So the first um, thing that, and I'll say this, saying that. I'm not here to advocate one or the other. Institutionally, uh, Clean Power Alliance, we don't benefit financially one way or another. Um, as an institution, it doesn't hurt our risk management. Um, uh, we're, you know, we, we believe in, in advancing decarbonization, but from an institutional perspective, from a financial perspective, it doesn't matter to us what default rate you are on. Um, However, what I'm seeing the discussion at city councils is, is first on the, on the policy side. So many councils, uh, many cities are either doing or updating their climate action plans. Um, and they see that uh, when you know, it's all said and done and they have the options in front of them, the um, easiest and most cost effective way for the cities uh, to reduce their, their local environmental footprint or their local GHG footprint is through a default change. 
Um, you don't have to build anything. You don't have to go through any permitting processes. Uh, it is really with the flick of a switch. Um, uh, and that is attractive to folks um, who want to be uh, uh, either aggressive or do want to hit certain goals and targets within their climate action plans. The second bit, and I'll get to this in a minute, is that the when we launched, the 100% green product was between 9 and 10% more than the other two products. Um, that was a significant um, cost differential. Over time, as we have brought on more and more new renewable resources, and it's the new renewables that are cheaper, uh, that differential has narrowed to between 3 and 4%. And I expect that differential to remain narrow um, over time. Uh, so that's the second reason. Um, it was a pretty far out there for a number of cities to say, oh, we're going to launch at 100% green at 9 or 10% premium. Uh, but now as it gets to between three and four, uh, that seems to be more palatable to, to some of these cities. Um, and then the third answer um, is back in this idea that most people stick with it. Um, we've not run into uh, significant um, sort of customer pushback, constituent pushback. Um, we now have a playbook of how we do this. Um, and we have had billing issues with Edison before. Um, this is a billing question that we control completely. It doesn't impact Edison at all. And so by the fact that we're in control, um, I usually makes it a little bit more seamless. Um, so that's sort of restating and elaborating a little bit more about what, um, uh, wh you know, why you see um, 15 there and, and five more in green. Um, Regardless of what uh, what default change you do in October, I did want to cover some customer communications about what we do so um, and and how we collaborate with with the the city. So first of all, um, sort of on on uh, on us, we send out two postcards, um, one that takes place before the default change and one that takes place after the default change or in the that month that the default change is is occurring. Um, here are some examples of those cards. Um, the September card uh, talks about um, what's happening, the, the bill impact, the environmental impact, why, um, uh, you know, sort of why uh, the council at that, you know, made that decision. The October postcard is more of a reminder. Hey, this happened. Check your bill. Make sure this is okay with you. Um, but also sort of thanking folks for um, being, you know, contributing to uh, the fight against greenhouse gas uh, emissions. Um, again, I'll say, mo you know, both postcards provide clear and concise instructions about how to stay on your current rate um, or opt out uh, if that's your choosing. Um, we do do social media posts. Um, we do these on our own. Um, but we also provide them to the city uh, to put out in your own uh, social media. Uh, you all um, are are very active on social media, and we would look for we'll look forward to collaborating with you. We've we've done um, videos um, on this, and we we know that that videos on social media tend to attract folks, and and so we're we're um, doing that, and we'll do that again. Um, and then we provide fact sheets. We don't print these out. We don't know how much uh, you use them, but we provide PDFs of them, and then you can print them out, have them here at City Hall, wherever you would like to. Uh, uh, and then there's, you know, to the extent that you have, you know, staff time and energy to do it, we have in some cities done um, in-person meetings, gone to Chamber of Commerce luncheons, done sort of other community outreach ahead of the, the um, uh, you know, ahead of the default change to make sure that people know what's happening and um, what their options are. Again, we really take the lead from the city on this one, as opposed to the big enrollment that took place in 2019, which was a mass enrollment of a million customers across two counties. This is much more um, customized uh, because it's really a decision that um, is, is uh, you know, co-branded with the city because that's the decision that you all are are making. Um, okay, so the rates picture. So 
uh, just you know some some dynamics here. So for the first three op uh, years of our operation, um, we had the lowest rates available in the region. Um, customers here in in Camarillo did save um, you know uh, several hundred thousand dollars on their on their electricity bills over that time. In 2021, um, because of a rise in the exit fee or the PCIA uh, and other uh, energy increases to energy charges, we became more expensive for all three products. And we've been more expensive for um, uh, uh, by about five to six percent on the lean product uh, here in Camarillo uh, for the past oh, nine months or so. Um, uh, this has been been uh, combined with um, a rise in Edison's delivery rates um, of about 18% uh, over the past 12 months. Um, the, the dynamics of all that mean that uh, our harsh portion of the bill is only about a third of uh, the, the, the customer's bill compared to about half. So basically what's happening is the infrastructure charges are rising much faster than the generation charges. We're actually trying to push those generation charges down, um, but we can't uh, push them down faster than uh, making up for the infrastructure side of the bill. Um, all of this to say is that cost comparisons fluctuate over time. You can choose any single point in time uh, that uh, and and one rate or another will be more or or less expensive, um, uh, and that's kind of what's happening now. Um, on March first, so not, uh, eight days ago, nine days ago, um, that wonderful PCIA or exit fee uh, dropped eighty five percent, and that means that no action on our own. Clean Power Alliance customers uh, for the next few months will be getting a 6% rate cut uh, uh, equal to about $11 a month. So there, our customers are getting back um, quite a bit of the, the additional costs they paid um, over, um, over the last year. I'll say that when the, when the rates were you know, five, 6% higher during these nine months, um, we did not see significant um, opt-out activity um, across our region or here in, in, in Camarillo. Um, so the other thing that, that happened on March 1st is that Edison's generation rates went up 18%. I think the last time I was here, I think in, or the first time I was here this uh, in October or something, I said, you know, yes, we're more expensive now. We think Edison's rates are too low. Um, it turned out that they were. They uh, missed their mark by seven hundred million dollars this year, so that means that the the rates this year are making up a seven hundred million dollar under collection, um, which is uh, why they had to raise rates eighteen percent. So um, uh, we've got this now this dynamic of uh, we've got a significant uh, rate cut for the next uh, uh, through July first. And then the board is now uh, in discussions about where to set our rates for fiscal year 21 or 22, 23. Um, I've put a chart up there. Um, this is um, indicative uh, because you know the board just got its first presentation. Susan, was it last Thursday? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Thursday. Yeah, um, about what the rate outlook for this coming year. Um, looks like. So these are I indicative numbers, but um, I'll, I'll note a, f a couple of things. One, you see, uh, uh, you know, January to July. Um, this would be post our, our rate determination this coming year. Um, so Edison, its base rate, 161 to 173, pretty significant um, increase there. Um, we think that our rates in terms of total typical bill will be pretty much where they are where they were in January um, uh, you know pretty flat in terms of the total bill um, after our our rate determination what's really flipping is the comp is the competitiveness so you'll see in this one we're looking at you know 
one to two percent uh, discount for lean, somewhere between you know one uh, percent discount and parity for clean, and about a two and a half percent uh, more expensive than Edison's base rate for the 100% green product. Again, these are early guidance, indicative. I don't expect it to, um, you know, fluctuate too much outside of this, uh, that, that. But um, one thing that I'll note is, you know, we, the board has talked a lot about providing rate stability, and this shows there. The other thing that you'll note is that narrow differential between the three products has, has remained. It's, uh, you know, four, four and a half percent at most between the lowest priced product and the highest priced product. Um, this, is, this is in your staff report, so I'm not gonna run through it uh, too much, but the, you know, the impact of going to a, uh, uh, um, from the lean to 100% green is um, more of, on GHG is more than double. Uh, um, from from the the imp, let me start over the impact of going from lean to clean 120 uh, million pounds um, and then the impact from lean to 100 percent green 278 million pounds or more than double um, again the customer cost uh, about a one percent bill increase for clean power and four percent to go to clean power and about. 4% to go to 100% green, um, a reminder that low-income customers, about 20% of which uh, of our customers in Camarillo are on care or FARA or medical baseline. Um, and then there's the, the city costs, um, uh, about 10 grand more to go to 100% green for the accounts that uh, you currently have with, with CPA. Um, do want to note on the care and 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 FARA and medical baseline. Um, these are programs people apply through Edison. They have a very high uptake rate, and the reason they have a high uptake rate is they are income qualified. But you do not have to submit income verification if you've already done so through a number of other income qualified programs, including SNAP. You know, which is you know the, the food stamps. Uh, if you qual if you or your family qualify for reduced or free priced lunch, um, that's an automatic pass into the care or FARA program. There's a number of WIC, a number of the the, the programs that um, are income qualified. Uh, the, they're set up here in in the utility business to not require anything. Show your your your, your WIC card, your food stamps. Uh, uh, um, eligibility and you're automatically enrolled in into care or FARA. So very high uptake amongst those programs. Um, and then just to to um, uh, conclude, um, under either scenario, clean or 100% green, customers are able to opt down, stay on the lean um, uh, rate. Um, they can also opt out of CPA. Uh, and return to SCE service, one of the things that I believe is, is really interesting about a default rate change at, at any time is it does remind customers that they have that choice um, and that uh, it, again, markets the, the fact that we do offer choice and that there are a range of, of programs and uh, rates for them. Um, they, people can uh, change their rate or opt out by uh, calling our call center, emailing us, or there's an automatic web form on, on the website. Um, and important, anybody who's opted out, anybody who's made a change already um, is not impacted by a default change. Those, those choices, if they've already made a choice, those choices hold. So we're not gonna re-enroll someone who already opted out or, or anything like that, no action is required. So um, I will um, stop there, thanks for your um, time and um, Happy to answer any questions. I think they're, you know, they're um, now or wherever we are in the meeting. All right. Uh, questions? Kevin? Thank you for being here. Um, we've kind of all seen recently the volatility of, for lack of a better term, the energy marketplace. 
As far as setting your rates and going into October, uh, how accurate uh, can you expect to be? I'm sure that's a little bit of a, a moving target here, but you know, kind of how do you? What, what is your process on how you go about that? Yeah, it's a it's a great question. So let me start from the macro and say that um, we're we're lucky that the electricity market is. Um, pretty well insulated from the international uh, conditions that are going on. We don't burn oil to generate electricity in California. Um, uh, we burn natural gas and we have renewables. The natural gas market is a very regional market, um, mostly impacted by the, in, in, across the Western United States. But natural gas is very difficult to transport across oceans and we have a lot of um, domestic capacity in the natural gas market. So um, the volatility that you're seeing in the in you know, gasoline prices and that, um, we're, we're pretty well insulated from that. Doesn't mean we're not insulated from the weather, uh, and it doesn't mean we're not insulated from uh, you know, other, other price shocks um, in the natural gas market. Um, that gar market has remained relatively stable um, over, over these last, the last month or so um, as, as the Ukraine uh, war unfolded. Um, now, our process in terms of how we set rates is um, we, uh, there's a very active forward market um, in energy prices uh, that, we're, that we buy forward contracts, and so we can lock in a lot of our costs over a three to four year period. Um, and then we look at, at the forwards um, uh, right around um, you know, you know, April and May, we update our financial projections and we come up with a revenue requirement. So it's a little bit of the opposite of the way um, a local government might, might uh, uh, budget, which is you see what your tax revenue is and then you decide to spend accordingly. We come up with a revenue requirement knowing what it costs to um, serve our customers, and we do that through you know a number of risk management projects um, with outside consultants, um, and then we set our rates to meet um, our costs. So we're pretty good at, by now at the closer we get to the uh, rate setting um, uh, process of knowing what our costs will be in the coming year. Those can always be disturbed by weather events. Um, so that just again, it, it's a, it's a commodity market which can you know fluctuates with the weather, but um, we we know that the rates we set will cover the the cost of service um, uh, going forward. And as we build more and more reserves, we're able to rely on those reserves to cushion any unexpected um, impacts. So uh, um, is that does that. That suffices, my, my okay. question. Thank you. Yeah. All right, other questions? All right, Ted. All right. Great job. Thank you very much. Yeah, of course.